RC cars are already a lot of fun, but Cobotics has upped the ante a little bit with the Real Racer. You can see this hump on top, and in the picture here, there is an FPV camera built into this thing, and it comes with a headset, so you can actually use the app to view the footage through your phone in like an FPV mode and record footage, take pictures, and even live stream from it. Now, it's a really fun way to experience RC in FPV mode, but it costs $150. So let's dive in, take a close look at all the features and see if it's worth it. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys. First thing we're gonna do is take a look at what all comes inside the package. Besides a smartphone, everything you need is in here. So the package comes with one of the cars. I think you can only find the package just by itself in red. There are different colored shells available separately, but then it also comes with the controller. It's kind of that pistol grip controller where you know you use the throttle by pushing this either pulling it in to accelerate or pushing it forward to go in reverse. And then finally it comes with the headset. It is adjustable and basically uh, there's this slot up front here where you open this up, you pop your smartphone in there and then you're viewing it through these two lenses. So it kind of looks like, you know, like a VR headset, very similar size to like a MetaQuest 2 but this just works with your phone. As far as getting it set up for that FPV mode, you know, all you need to do is turn it on and we'll turn on the controller, but you download and use the Real Racer app and then it connects via Wi-Fi to a signal from the car. So I'll hit join and it's joined on there. And once connected, it kind of goes into this camera view which you can toggle between um, just a view like here on the phone or if you want to use the goggles, you tap the headset button and it turns it into that stereo image. All right, and let's take a closer look at the controller. We do have the throttle, so you know, you pull back to accelerate forward and then you push it forward to go in reverse. And then you steer by turning this either left or right. And the wheel has a little like rubberized grip to it, so it doesn't really feel like my hands are gonna slip off of it when I am using it. And then up top, there are quite a few controls. Uh, some really nice things like a trim control. So that just means when you know you pull the trigger to go forward, if it feels like it's drifting to the left or right or pulling to the left or right, you can adjust the trim to kind of even that out. And a couple of other nice features on here that it has is you can control the steering angle basically. So you can adjust it so you can't turn very sharp or you can go full adjustment. So it actually has a pretty decent steering angle to it when you do have it turned all the way. So that is the full angle. You can kind of see what it's doing right there. But then if you turn it all the way down, it won't turn nearly as much. So you can kind of limit if you are going high speed, that kind of limits, you know, turning too sharply and spinning out or something like that. But also in combination with that, you do have a throttle limiter here as well. So when this thing is full open, you have that cranked all the way up and you pull the trigger, this thing will do 9.3 miles per hour, 15 kilometers per hour, uh, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that's really quick for something this size. It will really scoot across the room. So you can dial that down quite a bit. And so when I found myself first using this thing to get used to it, to get used to controls, especially to get used to the FPV mode, I turned this down pretty much all the way so that I could you know, try it out at a lower speed mode and just get used to how everything works. But with that variety of controls and the way to kind of dial it in and kind of you know set it up for whatever your use case is, uh, this has been a lot of fun to use. Probably at around 50% power is where I use it most of the time with the FPV goggles, but if I have those turned off and I'm just, you know, kind of just moving around the room and watching the car myself, then I will turn it up all the way and really, you know, really zip around the room. You know, and driving it around, it is four wheel drive. So every single wheel will spin and pull the power. It doesn't have a whole lot of ground clearance. So, you know, transitioning up onto like a thick rug, if, if you can get it over like the initial hump, then it's usually pretty fine, but you can get it stuck on there kind of easily as well if you aren't too careful with it. Uh, but all the wheels have independent suspension on here and it seems to drive pretty well in my experience. You know, when you do have the speed cranked up on like a hardwood floor, you still can kind of spin out and kind of drift it a little bit. But for the most part, you know, just spending time with it, getting used to it, getting to know, you know, how quickly you can go around corners. Um, yeah, this has just been a lot of fun to play with. The only thing I would really, you know, ask for or hope for, like it's a very fine, you know, getting that steering angle on here, you can only turn the controller maybe what, like 40 degrees or something like that? Either way, so it's, to do like really fine movements, it is just a tiny movement, and that definitely takes some getting used to. Also, the throttle, you know, I wish there was just maybe 
a little more resistance or a little more distance that you had to pull it so there was a little bit more fine control in there. Like I said, the more you use it, the more you get used to it and kind of figure out how to do that. But just under my impressions, I would love to see a little bit more resistance in there to make that trigger pull a little bit harder and give you a little bit more like fine control. But let's dive in and take a closer look at the app and what all you can do in there. And I'm just using my iPhone 11. And this works perfectly on here. The app works on both iOS and Android. All right, so for this, I'm just gonna record on the app and then we'll kind of overlay that. So you can see it's in the stereo mode right now. I'll swap it back to the normal view. You can see my notes over here on my computer. And we'll just kind of drive the car around a little bit. I have the speed turned down, so hopefully I don't, you know, go racing off the edge of my desk. You can kind of see what that video feed looks like on here. You can see it has a little throttle input indicator for how much throttle you're putting on it. And it also has buttons across the bottom for record video, capture image, media folder, setting, and that headset button. So let's dive into the settings and see what kind of things we can do here. So for streaming, uh, you can set this up to live stream from this camera if you want to, I guess. Uh, I don't know that I would ever do that, but very interesting. Storage, you can see, you know, all your different SD card modes. And there are some different driving modes in here, which is pretty nice. And as you can see, it's a pretty low latency connection. It's not like perfect. Let's see here, I will do that and so you can kind of see, there's definitely a few millisecond delay but it's not terrible. So of course we'd love to see that, you know, even lower, um, but still for driving, you know, this isn't bad. Oh, and one other button on the controller is that you can turn on and off the gyro mode by pushing this aux button. And that's gonna kind of help to control it around corners, I believe, so that it won't spin out as much. So obviously, you know, it comes with this headset, it has the app, you know, one of the main features of this is the FPV mode, which is pretty interesting. Although I will say, you know, if you're susceptible to motion sickness, this probably won't be something that you wanna do very often. You know, my daughter, she gets a little bit of motion sickness and she wanted to try the headset, so we let her try it. And she found that if she just, you know, held the phone and watched it, it was fine. But when she had the headset on, so, you know, the screen is all you're seeing in front of your eyes, that did make her start to feel a little bit nauseous. So just keep that in mind that if you do suffer from motion sickness, then the FPV mode might not be the best mode for you. But the fun thing about this is that it's fun to drive just by itself, even without the FPV goggles. This adds a totally different dimension to it though. You know, the fun thing with this is I can, you know, put on the goggles, set up a track around my room, go underneath, you know, different objects, go around objects that are obstructed from view. And uh, it kind of feels like a really fun way to race around my house. And Cobotics also talks about, you know, they have a two car kit. So, you know, racing with two people, I do think that would be a lot of fun to do as well. But even just by itself, you know, this, this is a really fun car to use. And quickly touching on battery life and overall durability, they say it gets up to like 25 minutes of runtime on a single battery. I maybe saw a little bit less than that, but still, you know, throughout that whole battery, like I was pretty much ready to take a break when the battery was empty anyway. So I was really impressed with the battery life on here. And likewise with durability, you know, this car can get going pretty fast. And if you're racing around your room, uh, it's definitely very likely you're gonna run into something. So I've definitely had some high speed, you know, crashes into the walls. And so far there is some scuffing, as you can see on the front here on the bumpers and a little bit on the fender here as well. But really, I think it's holding up pretty well. And if it does take a lot of damage, you can get replacement shells from Cobotics on their website for I think $15. That's also a way to change up the colors if you wanna change up the design of this. So overall impressions are really great with the app and driving and everything. As far as things I'd love to see improved on this, you know, if we could get lower latency, that would be awesome. Um, I'm pretty sure through the Wi-Fi signal that that's gonna be more difficult than as if you had like a straight 2.4 gigahertz connection. I personally would make a couple of tweaks to the throttle on here, you know, just a little bit more more resistance in the throttle would be pretty nice. And it would maybe be nice to see a little bit more ground clearance in here so we can handle the transition to rugs a little bit easier. That was my only complaint when I was driving around my living room. And it wasn't, you know, an issue every single time, it was just occasionally. So those are just a couple of little things that I would try to improve with this. And the headset itself, you know, it seems decent quality. Obviously it's all plastic. There's nothing, you know, super high material wise on here. Your phone just slips down in front. There is a uh, what we call it, IPD distance, I think your interpupillary distance. We can adjust the width of the lenses in here to fit different, uh, different eyes and different sizes of heads. You can also adjust the distance 
of the phone in front from the lens as you can see it here. So between those two adjustments, both myself and my kids, we were easily able to dial in uh, the image where it looked best and wasn't blurry. So no complaints with the headset. So, you know, overall, like, this is an expensive toy coming in at $150. There are much cheaper RC car options out there. You could probably even DIY your own FPV kit for a lot cheaper if you wanted to. But when it comes to everything included here, we have the car, the controller, the headset. We also have the app, which is has the ability to record media, to take photos, to you know adjust settings of the car on the fly. You know, all those things combined into one package. The $150 price point doesn't seem that unreasonable. But that's gonna do it for our review of the Cobotix Real Racer. Let us know what you think about it down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I will link to some of our sim racing content as well as our most recent video. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up so others can find it easier and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.